fundamentally the main force that you're pushing against when you're riding a bike um, is air, it's wind resistance. Yep. So we think a lot about the aerodynamics of a person on a bicycle and how to reduce the amount of drag, which is like the negative force that's slowing you down or decelerating you while you're riding. Uh, your legs and like how fast you can ride is like the power input to the bike. And so they'll measure that, and, and as Tom mentioned, in watts. And then other things are measured in terms of like the reduction in drag coefficient, which is like, again, a watt measurement over a sort of standard thing. So if you look at these helmets, you'll notice that compared to like a regular uh, helmet that you might get from the store, they're, they're, they're really smooth. There's not like too much frontal profile. You can see how the air would flow over them really smoothly. And that's because over years and years of iteration, they've made these high technology things so that they are slicker through the air so that you can ride faster with less effort, which means you can go further and have more fun. And so like there's a part of bike riding, which is like going further and going faster and, and having a lot of fun at speed. And then there's also parts of bike riding that aren't really having anything to do with speed at all. Like a lot of my riding, and one of the reasons that I can't tell you how many miles I ride, is instead of getting all the metrics and computer stuff, I put the computer and I leave it at home and I just go doodle around and look at trees and try to get myself lost and wander around back and then try to ride slowly. And that's part of where I find joy in the sport is not just in the sort of like hyper optimization side of things, but in the, the sort of freedom to go wherever I want under my own power. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Makes sense.